Okay, so Brennan Johnson, Ryan Yates, Renan Loddy, uh, Dean Henderson, the goalkeeper, and two more youngsters, Detlef Asapa Osongni, striker, 18 years of age, and midfielder Ollie Hammond, who's 20, making up the bench for Forrest today. They're going to play Forrest from left to right in the first half as we look at it. Their supporters all along this stand that we're sitting in are basically split. It's about three and a half thousand. Uh, so the players take the knee. Three and a half thousand supporters. And uh, they're in two halves, separated by the press seats. Uh, so we're about, what, seven or eight seats across, right down the middle of the stand. And they're basically using us as a tennis net for the beach ball to go one side and then the other. It's Blackpool who get us underway, uh, which is uh, a long ball down the left-hand side. And uh, thrown in quickly as it's knocked out of play, but it's... Uh, fallen for Gustavo Scarpa to send one forward for Dennis to try and get behind Marvin Ekpeteta at the back and Ekpeteta just about manages to sneak it away from Emmanuel Dennis and Blackpool bring it down in midfield Colback gets his foot in and wins it and tucks it back for Harry Toffolo and Toffolo sends it all the way back for Wayne Hennessy who clears from left to right Ekpeteta gets underneath it and tucks it down to his right I'll go through the Blackpool side for you in just a moment as the ball is played forward into the feet of Shane Lavery but Forrest win it Lavery goes down and Colback calmly sends it back to Hennessy Hennessy bangs it forward first time down the Forest left and it's over the head of Emmanuel Dennis and out of play for a Blackpool throw midway inside their own half Chris Maxwell in goal for Blackpool Andy Lyons is at uh, right back he's making his debut in place of the suspended Callum Connolly who uh, was sent off last week for two uh, bookable offences against Sunderland. Marvin Ekpeteta, Jordan Thornley and James Husband across the back four. A midfield of Sonny Carey, Ian Poveda, uh, Charlie Patino and Jake Beasley. And then up front, CJ Hamilton, the uh, former Mansfield man. As Forrest try and work it down the inside left channel, but Emmanuel Dennis is offside. It'll be a free kick. Uh, and Shane Lavery... Uh, CJ Hamilton and uh, Shane Lavery really uh, in the wide positions really in support of Jake Beasley who is uh, the tall figure playing through the middle up front for Blackpool today uh, Charlie Patino incidentally on loan from Arsenal 19 years of age played against Forrest for Arsenal in the third round last year here is Maxwell clearing from right to left 0-0 the score after the opening couple of minutes Fuster heads forward towards Surridge headed powerfully away from him by Thornley and then Cook heads it to his left for McKenna Fuster gets a touch hooking it over his shoulder headed forward again by Blackpool and Williams tries to bring it down but CJ Hamilton takes it away from him then Williams wins it back and it'll be another throw for Blackpool which is about 25 yards out down there near side to us the left uh, most of that touch line uh, on this near side either side of us is completely obscured by all the Forest fans standing up it's thrown in towards Beasley uh, but Forrest are able to get it clear and that's a lovely turn from Scarpa who then rides the challenge as they try and foul him and eventually he's stopped by the second attempt to bring him down and that was from Ian Paveda and that will be a free kick for Forrest nice control and turn from Gustavo Scarpa yeah good start from him he's had a couple of nice touches um, everyone wondering what this weather's all about coming from Brazil and he just uh, <laughs> Uh, it's gone down about five or six degrees since we got here. Yeah, it's been a scrappy start. Both sides getting into tackles, into headers. Um, Porry's just feeling the way, obviously. His team want to play together uh, for a long time. And it just takes a little while just to settle into a rhythm. Um, but it's been decent so far. Not had any problems. A couple of back passes to Hennessy. Other than that, no problems. Uh. Harry Toffolo just plays it off the uh, new fullback Andy Lyons, the Irishman. Forest throw left hand side, and now Toffolo has broken forward down that left wing. He's up level with the edge of the Blackpool penalty area and fires over the cross, which is stabbed away. Dennis controls on the edge of the penalty area, beats one, running across the edge of the box. Now knocks it to his right for Nico Williams, 20 yards out. Williams leaves it now for Colback. 
Colback turns onto his left foot and rolls it across the Blackpool half for O'Brien. Keeps it going left-hand side. This is Toffolo. Tucks it back infield for Scarpa. Gives it back to Toffolo. Toffolo beats his man and is fouled. It's a late challenge from Andy Lyons, 22 years of age. Signing from Bohemians of Dublin in the summer and has had to be patient. And it'll be a free kick for Gustavo Scarpa who is going to take it from the left-hand side. It is about 35 yards out, and it is right on the far touchline, Forrest's left-hand side. Line of players on the edge of the Blackpool penalty area, including the likes of Cook and McKenna up from the back. And it is aimed towards McKenna back post by Scarpa, but it's plucked out of the air comfortably by Chris Maxwell. Didn't reach those big men up at the uh, back post. Couple of early goals in the FA Cup third round in the three o'clock kickoffs. Burnley in front over Bournemouth uh, down on the south coast. Bournemouth nil, Burnley won. So the uh, championship high flyers off to a good start against the Premier League team and West Brom in front against Chesterfield by a goal to nil. Uh, elsewhere locally, no goals. Mansfield Barrow is on 95.5 FM this afternoon and uh, in the National League, it's Aldershot nil, Notts County nil. You'll find that game online at the BBC Sport website or uh, follow our links off Twitter. Here come Blackpool towards the edge of the Forest penalty area, cleared by uh, McKenna, but Blackpool have it again. This is Lyons well forward, level with the edge of the box, crossing, headed away by Williams, only as far as husband, and he gives it to CJ Hamilton. Hamilton with the cross, in towards the near post, Cook heads it away, nodded back in again, Beasley controlling it with his back to goal, gives it husband, husband shoots just wide of the target across the face of goal. Forrest a little bit statuesque at the back and husband allowed to get in behind and from about the corner of the six yard box he sits it right across the face of goal with Hennessy rooted to the spot and fortunately for the Reds it goes just wide of the back post yeah it should be goal down they should stick that in the far side Hennessy um, as you say rooted he didn't look as if he knew what, just where he was going on was some poor defending by Forrest in their own area, not really getting a really positive, solid header on it, just heading it up into the air. And then husband just went past as if nobody was there and uh, had a shot with his left foot, just dragged it a yard wide of the far post. But a warning for Forrest, this isn't going to be an easy game. They've just got to defend a little bit better than that, have a bit more commitment on heading the ball out the area. Charging forward again now, Blackpool. This is Lyons, who's wide on the right, and he's tucked it back for Sonny Carey who crosses in towards the near post aimed at Beasley. But Hennessy claims and rolls it out to Fuster. Fuster kind of gets the ball stuck under his feet though, and it's one back by Patino. And now towards the edge of the penalty area goes in, Perveda. And he lays it off to his left, just outside the penalty area, left wing for Husband. Gives it back to Perveda, who crosses deep. And that is going to go beyond Shane Lavery. And out for a throw on the far side to Forrest. Just a bit of a spell for Blackpool. Seven and a half minutes played. Nil-nil. And hooked forward. Down Forrest left by uh, Toffolo. Comes back to O'Brien who brings it down and gives it to Scarpa. Out to the right-hand side for Nico Williams. Williams rolls it infield to Fuster. And Fuster turns the ball back for Steve Cook inside his own half square for uh, McKenna across halfway and rolls it towards the feet of Dennis who gets a nice touch on it ahead of the defender at Pateta turns away from him bangs it in low looking for Surridge but it is cleared at the near post Colback wins it back might fall for Scarper in the middle of the Blackpool half knocked away though Colback wins it back once more and now O'Brien wide to the left hand side for Toffolo well forward Toffolo gives it square to Dennis at the corner of the penalty area and now here's uh, Dennis outnumbered in the end by Blackpool players. A back pass towards their goalkeeper, Chris Maxwell, almost cut out by Sam Surridge and cleared by the home side. Fuster gets a challenge in and Husband goes back to recover for Blackpool. Back it goes to Maxwell again, who's all in luminous yellow kit and clearing left-footed. Just about kept in play, and uh, then Nico Williams wins it and runs away from them towards the edge of the penalty area. Williams still going on. Left foot short, dragged just wide of the target. Powerful run from Nico Williams, who won it 
near the halfway line and was just encouraged to run on and on and infield and infield. Got to the edge of the box, but his left foot shot goes just wide as he pulled it low past the post and it remains nil-nil after nine minutes. Yeah, it just looks as if he might have got his shot off a fraction earlier. Decided to try and take another yard, just got a nudge which put him off balance as he broke in. It looked good pace there, uh, got past uh, a couple of Blackpool players. Mistake on the edge of the box by Ekpateta, who is fouled, according to referee James Linnington, by Emmanuel Dennis. Yeah, plan, trying to play out from the back there, Dennis nearly nicked in. Uh, but Williams there, showed good pace to get forward, not frightened to have a go. He ended up dragging it three or four yards wide. But, uh, yeah, good play from, from Forrest to get the ball into that position. Uh, Chesterfield have equalised against West Brom elsewhere in the third round of the Cup. It's one apiece in that one. And Brighton are in front early against Championship side Middlesbrough. Here come Blackpool of the Championship in the relegation zone in the Championship. 22nd, Patino turning it wide to the right-hand side. And rolled infield towards the penalty area by uh, Lavery, but not accurately enough. And here is Toffolo sending a long one forward, left side. He's looking to get Surridge in behind Marvin Ekpateta. And uh, the 27-year-old defender turns it back to his goalkeeper. And now it's with James Husband, the former Norwich man. Left-hand side rolling it infield to Jordan Thornley, who drops it into midfield. And this is Sonny Carey. Came to uh, Blackpool at a non-league football at Kings Lynn. Late challenge by Lewis O'Brien on the far side on Lions, and it'll be a free kick for Blackpool. It is um, it's a pretty typical cup tie so far, isn't yeah. it? No team is really able to get the ball down and get their foot on it. No, there's not been a lot of quality. There's been a lot of uh, huff and puff and, and sort of misplaced headers and loose balls and all the sort of things you would expect of... Uh, of this sort of game um, nobody's had any real chances yet well Blackpool did but they didn't take it um, no it's been rather scrappy here comes CJ Hamilton the former Mansfield man running towards the left edge of the forest box turns it towards goal and it's blocked by Steve Cook and it'll go out for a corner to Blackpool uh, equaliser now for Bournemouth against Burnley they are level at one apiece uh, National League side Boreham Wood behind to Accrington Stanley in the early stages. And uh, Steve McLaughlin scored for Mansfield Town against Barrow on a 95.5 FM commentary. Here comes the Blackpool corner, straight down the throat of Wayne Hennessy. That's easy. Forrest, though, have a man down. With the uh, quarter blow, I think it's Steve Cook, face down in the uh, turf, getting slowly back up to his feet well certainly to his knees and now to his feet and uh, head bowed gets back up again and seems to be okay without needing any treatment just holding his chest or neck area but, uh, seems okay and Forrest restart with a drop ball at the feet of Wayne Hennessy <laughs> remains nil nil <laughs> he's obviously struggling he's had, a, he's had a smack in the chest I think from somebody just hitting him in the from the corner and he's had the ball more now yeah. he's, he's struggling he's holding his he's holding his chest he didn't want the ball and everybody's passed it to him he's had it three times Scarpa and Surridge linking up inside the uh, Blackpool half now and Scarpa has it wide right level with the edge of the box fires over the cross towards Surridge headed away from him comes out though for Dennis gets away from one challenge but then husband mm, sticks a foot in and lobs it back to his goalkeeper who claims and clears it out quickly to Shane Lavery down the right-hand side challenge coming in from Lewis O'Brien who was covering for Toffolo and it's out for a Blackpool throw nil-nil it remains 13 and a half minutes played on match day from BBC Radio Nottingham in the FA Cup third round and here come Blackpool down their right-hand side uh, it is cleared by Harry Toffolo Surridge trying to keep it in play. Ekpateta makes sure he can't, but the uh, efforts from Surridge mean that it'll be a Forest throw rather than a Blackpool one near halfway. Just, uh, five or six yards or so inside Forest's own half. Thrown in towards uh, 
Dennis. Dennis twisting and turning. And in the end, lays it back into his own half for Steve Cook. Cook comes across the halfway line and then tries to thread it in behind Thornley for Dennis, who continued his run, but Thornley was watching and cleared to Husband, who knocks it long towards Beasley. It's gone over him, but it falls for CJ Hamilton towards the edge of the forest box. Right foot shot blocked by McKenna, and that'll spin away for another Blackpool corner, this time from the far side, their right. Yeah, just a long ball down the side and a, a flick header. All of a sudden, Hamilton's in. And he's, uh, he's got a little bit of pace, but Brian, I think it was, got back at him uh, just with a block. And uh, as far as the scene in the Premier League, it's very, very quickly going from attack to defence. Charlie Patino goes across to take the corner, in swinging near post. Surridge gets up and gets a good header away. Comes out towards Dennis. He loses out and it's headed back towards Patino, right wing for Blackpool, foot in from Fuster, wins it well and goes chasing after it. Left wing still just inside his own half, tried to feed it infield to Scarpa, but it's cut out. And here's Charlie Patino once again. He gives it to Shane Lavery down the uh, right-hand side, blocked by a combination of Toffolo and O'Brien. Toffolo clears towards Dennis, who shoved his man fairly obviously. And that's going to be a free kick for Blackpool, which is about 15 yards inside Forrest's half and to the right of centre. Elsewhere, Mansfield leading Barrow 1-0 through Stephen McLaughlin in League 2, and still 0-0 between Aldershot and Notts County. In our online commentary this afternoon uh, through the BBC Sport website. Uh, Mansfield Barrow is on 95.5 FM. From the home of live Nottinghamshire Sport, here is the Blackpool free kick. Floated towards the back edge of the penalty area, headed away by McKenna. Colback trying to get away from CJ Hamilton. Hamilton looked as if he was holding him and now is racing away down the left wing. CJ Hamilton hits the byline, stands it up towards the back post, goes beyond everybody. And O'Brien has headed it back into the penalty area and then it's put home. And Blackpool are in front. Marvin Ekpateta scores. Mistake by O'Brien at the back post. And Marvin Ekpateta just stabs the loose ball in and gives the championship side the lead after 16 minutes. It's Blackpool 1, Forest 0 in the FA Cup third round. There was no danger because the cross was too long, it was too deep, it was beyond everybody in an orange shirt. And Lewis O'Brien, almost inexplicably, just headed it back across the face of his own goal. And from there, Forrest was struggling and the loose ball bundled in by Marvin Ekpateta and it's 1-0 Blackpool. Well no more than, the, than Forrest deserve that because they, they're they not defended well I think I mentioned it a couple of minutes ago yeah, they got getting serious headers on the ball heading it back into dangerous areas and that's exactly what happened there and they couldn't get a block on once the ball dropped around the penalty spot and uh, stuck away into the side netting, Forrest won down um, there's been nothing in the game up to there but uh, they haven't defended well and uh, yeah, big mistake, sort of sort of let Blackpool in very, very easily. Got round the back very, very easily, actually. Hamilton stuck the ball up at the far post. And uh, that was all a little bit too easy. And unnecessary. And just head it out the other way. Well, there's nobody behind there's him. No, maybe he didn't no, get a shout. Maybe he thought there was yeah, somebody behind him, I guess. Yeah. There's no need. Just bring the ball down uh, and play your way out. But uh, uh, not to be... So Forrest have got a lot to do now. Uh, that is uh, going to be a Forrest throw on the left-hand side, which is going to be taken by Harry Toffolo, but not from there. He has to go back. As uh, West Brom take the lead again at Chesterfield. Long ball forward from Blackpool again, which is going all the way through to Wayne Hennessy. Uh, Chesterfield one, uh, West Bromwich Albion two. Middlesbrough have equalised against Brighton as well. It's 1-1. And here Forrest trail Blackpool by a goal to nil, but Emmanuel Dennis goes chasing after one down the left wing, gets to the ball and holds it up. He's taking on uh, Thornley and he uh, hits the byline as uh, the uh, overlapping run comes from Harry Toffolo, but the ball is just too far ahead of Toffolo. He can't keep it in play and it's out for a goal kick for Blackpool. And Chris Maxwell prepares to take from our right-hand side, away at the 
Mortensen stand end. Statue of Stan Mortensen outside the uh, ground. Stanley Matthews stand on the far side and the Jimmy Armfield stand away to our left hand side. Plenty of history and FA Cup history at that about this club. And they lead Forest by a goal to nil after 19 minutes. Here's McKenna forward into the feet of Dennis who tried to leave it for Scarpa but taken away from him by Charlie Patino. And now this is Thornley. And he gives it to Ek Pateta, the goal scorer. Out wide to the right for Lyons, who drops it infield for Sonny Carey. Ek Pateta gives it to Thornley again. Thornley away to the right hand side. And now here's Lyons getting the ball into his stride and obviously pushed by Emmanuel Dennis. And it gives Blackpool another free kick. This one is about 30 yards out and right of centre. And another chance for Blackpool to get the ball into the Forest penalty area. Another needless foul, really. And it gives a lot of fouls away, Dennis, doesn't it? That, as you say, are needless. And sometimes you just got to track players. And I think if I was Steve Cooper, I'd say to him, just stay up on the halfway line. Um, it's given two or three free kicks away now in potentially dangerous, dangerous positions. And this is another one for Forrest to defend. It's from the right-hand side, about 30 yards out. Carey delivers back post. Ek Pateta had gone down, though, on the edge of the penalty area. He and uh, Scott McKenna close together, and the referee having a word with McKenna about being over-physical, and that means that Carey will have the opportunity to take the free kick again. And as referee walks away, so Ek Pateta and McKenna start shoving each other again <laughs> as soon as his back's turned. Uh, here's the delivery once again towards the uh, back post. It might come all the way through. They're appealing for offside and they've got it eventually as the assistance flag goes up on the far side, right behind a, a stanch and a pillar uh, from where we're sitting. And so Forrest get the free kick. Uh, and take it from nowhere near where the free kick should have been. Steve Cook pinching about 10 yards. Blackpool leading Forest by a goal to nil as we approach the halfway mark at the uh, first half here at Bloomfield Road on match day from BBC Radio Nottingham. Still Mansfield one Barrow nil thanks to Stephen McLaughlin's goal and nil nil between Aldershot and Notts County in the National League. Lofted forward left side for Emmanuel Dennis gets to the ball. And he was second favourite. He's done well. Holds it up, rolls it in field to uh, O'Brien. O'Brien square for Fuster. Fuster tucks it to the right for Nico Williams. Went slightly behind him off a deflection. Williams cuts in field, gives it back to O'Brien. 35 yards out. Scarper twists and turns and gives it to Fuster again. Fuster being forced away from goal by Husband, but still manages to turn it right hand side for Williams. Has to roll it back in field for Fuster and Forrester. Happy to go back to halfway and start again with a long diagonal from Cook for Toffolo, who heads it back into play uh, to O'Brien. O'Brien closed down by a combination of players and loses out, but then Colback wins it back, and it's a really good clearance into Dennis inside the penalty area, but left side. He's holding on to it, trying to find the shooting angle. Oh, he's hit the crossbar, Emmanuel Dennis, as he curls one right-footed from about 12 yards out at the left side of the penalty area. It's a good effort from Dennis. Just twisting, turning, side sidestepping players to get the shooting angle and curling one onto the bar before Blackpool clear out for a forest throw. Here's Nico Williams, right wing with Fuster in support. Williams gives it to Scarpa, 30 yards out towards the centre of the field. He gives it to O'Brien. Back to goal and goes backwards for Steve Cook once again. Cook rolls it into Surridge, who's turning on the edge of the box. Lays it off now for Scarpa. Scarpa onto his right foot, shoots, goalkeeper saves. Straight at him from about 22 yards. But that's better from Forrest. Yeah, good spell from Forrest. And that's what Dennis can do. He's not had a lot of luck at Forrest with, with certainly getting into goal-scoring situations. Um, he does well, he has good feet but sort of lets things go to a, a little bit late and, and doesn't just pick the right pass, but he had a nice little bendy there and hit the crossbar, came out, and good play, kept the ball in possession on this side, Scupper eventually getting uh, a shot on target, quite a tame one, 
but uh, all the same, it's a shot on target. He's got the Forest crowd going a little bit. Cleared by Cook and kept in play by Surridge, who gives it to Scarpa. Scarpa making tracks through the Blackpool half and gives it back to Surridge. Surridge knocks it one side of his man, goes round the other, and then blasts it into the side netting from an angle. Dennis looking for a pullback, but there was only one thing Surridge was ever going to do from that angle. But unusually for him, he's not been able to hit the target. He's not been able to find the finish. Just wide of the right-hand post as he runs in from the inside right channel and into the side netting. Remains 1-0 Blackpool. Yeah, absolutely. Took the hard option there, trying to just nick it into the near post. Uh, Emmanuel Dennis has stood on his own in the middle of the six-yard box just to push the ball across. But good play. Surrey's brought the ball down on the halfway line and he had his own little bit of skill to, uh, to get into the area. Nice little flick past the defender, followed it through. And all he had to do really was take the goalkeeper out of the decision and just, just cross it in. Dennis has stood waiting for it. He's uh, not the happiest man on the field at the moment. But uh, Surridge is a striker and he got himself into a good position. And he only had one thing in his mind, that was to try and score. But he took the hardest option, which unfortunately for him didn't come off. Well, it's three times in a couple of minutes, Forrest have almost got themselves level. Dennis hitting the bar, Scarpa shot. Uh, fairly tame in the end, straight at the goalkeeper. And then Surridge working the opportunity well for himself. Here's Scarpa winning it again, gives it O'Brien. Just on the halfway line now for Fuster. Fuster waiting for the run of Williams, but he's well tracked by CJ Hamilton. Now gives it to Williams, rolls it infield to O'Brien. Back to halfway for Cook. Under pressure from Jake Beasley, former Rochdale man. He turns it to his left as Cook for McKenna. Across into the Blackpool half goes McKenna. Running forward, gives it now the defeat of Dennis. Dennis away from one man and leaping towards the penalty area again. Takes on another, goes outside him, hits the byline, tries to pull it across. Too many tangerine shirts back, but Forrest win it again. Fuster turns it towards goal and off the deflection. It's saved by Chris Maxwell diving away to his right. Forrest turning it on now, having gone behind, they're finding the response and they're knocking on Blackpool's door. Yeah, they're starting to get it together. And most of it's coming from Emmanuel Dennis down that left-hand side. Um, looks dangerous. He's got the he's got the makings of the of the Blackpool defenders on that side, definitely. And uh, he got to the byline, blocked in. And to just managed to uh, get onto the loose ball and produced a decent save uh, from Maxwell there. But Forrest playing a little bit better. It's been a it's been a scrappy game, but they're they're starting to turn um, their superiority, which it should be, being a Premier League side, and trying to just turn it on a little bit. Here's O'Brien, just inside his own half, finding Toffolo. Toffolo gives it back to Lewis O'Brien down the left-hand side. He's closed down his uh, Toffolo by Ian Perveda. And back it comes to halfway from the forest throw. As uh, a flock of seagulls goes across Bloomfield Road and Forrest played across their back line and now forward from Cook into Fuster's feet, lays it off for Lewis O'Brien once again. Here's Billy Fuster, the 19-year-old, switching it out to the right-hand side for Williams. Williams thinking about the early cross. Now uh, he's going to take on CJ Hamilton. Turns, checks out, and turns it back along the line for Scarpa. Rolls it infield to Fuster. Fuster for O'Brien. O'Brien, though, loses out to uh, Ian Paveda and then has to drag him back. And it'll be a free kick for Blackpool in the middle of their own half. Uh, Mansfield are now 2 0 ahead over Barrow in our 95.5 FM commentary. Stephen Quinn with the second as here come Blackpool again. Well forward down the Forest left hand side. All backwards for Provider, who is under pressure from Colback. Goes down, gets back up again with the ball still at his feet. Now taking on O'Brien and manages to cross but behind for a goal kick. So Mansfield 2 Barrow 0. Stephen McLaughlin and Stephen Quinn on target for the Stags, still nil-nil between Aldershot and Notts County and Blackpool here leading Forest by a goal to nil, goal scored after 16 minutes and it came from Marvin Ekpeteta elsewhere Sheffield United now in front at Millwall by a goal to nil in the third round of the cup here's McKenna out to the left hand side for Toffolo and uh, sent back to goalkeeper Hennessy. Now Steve Cook up towards halfway into the feet of Fuster, who turns, 
and gives it to Nico Williams. Williams wriggling between two challenges, then riding another, and it's cleared into midfield where Gustavo Scarpa gets hold of it and pings the ball away to the left-hand side for Toffolo. Chests it down near the corner flag, hooks over a cross, Surridge trying to get to it, couldn't do so, headed clear. And then Colback wins it back cleverly, just uh, getting his body in between ball and opposition player. And now McKenna sends a ball out wide to the right-hand side. He's looking for Williams. Williams couldn't control. Just uh, bounced awkwardly for Nico Williams. And it's away for a throw to Blackpool level with the edge of, the, of their own penalty area. Yeah, two centre-halves getting into the stride now. They haven't played for a little while. Uh, picking one or two nice passes out. That was a decent pass. Williams had just checked his run, he thought the ball was going out the other side, I think. And um, that just uh, just left him a yard short um, of getting that ball and couldn't just get to the bounce of it. But uh, Forest midfield, all looking very, very similar, aren't they, actually? The stature and the way that they play. And young Fuster's not done too badly. He's, he's got the ball, he looks confident. He's zipped the ball out nicely. There's players here and here around him. Uh, good experience for him to play with with Colbeck and O'Brien at either side of him. It's headed on by Scarpa towards Surridge. He's absolutely buffeted from behind by Thornley. And Forrest have won a throw anyway, but uh, Surridge wanted a free kick, and as you can hear, so did the fans. James Linnington having none of it. Uh, Notts County have gone 1-0 ahead. Jim O'Brien has scored, so Mansfield and Notts now in front. Mansfield two up over Barrow, and um, Notts County winning at Aldershot. Jim O'Brien on target for Knotts this afternoon. Surridge goes chasing after it again. Again, Thornley is uh, pretty hefty in his challenge, leaning onto Surridge and pushing him out into touch. And Surridge is being called to the referee. So too is Thornley. I think out of view from us, actually, because of the standing Forest fans, I think Surridge has probably given... Uh, Thornley a little shove back. I think he's getting a bit frustrated, Sam Surridge, because that looked like two fouls on him by the same player in quick succession. I would agree with you, Colin. I think there was just a trying to the Blackpool player was trying to see the ball out of play, and Sturridge just nicked in front of him. He just pushed him. Um, not a bit dangerous around here, just to push him off the pitch because the, the edge of the pitch um, yeah, is not very much near the hoardings and whatever. And so um, I think there was a little bit of afters in there. And that's going to be just, uh, the referee's just going to keep his eye on that one, on the, I think. I'd say sure he's just getting a little bit uh, frustrated at not getting himself a foul in there. O'Brien lofts it forward towards Dennis, headed away by Ekpeteta, nodded forward again by uh, Fuster, headed on by Scarpa. Dennis trying to nick it away from Marvin Ekpeteta, who has to slide in in the end. He thought he had it under control, and in the end it was pretty desperate as he tucked it out for a throw, which Forrest have worked nicely. Here's Toffolo getting the return ball and crossing, headed away as far as Scarpa, who hits it, deflects twice, I think. It goes behind for a corner to Forrest, who are going through the gears here at Blackpool, but trail by a goal to nil. Yeah, well, they have to go through the gears because it wasn't really great, was it, early on? Um, they struggled to find any rhythm, but they seem to have found a little bit now. 32 played, Scarpa with the corner, left wing, out swinging. Kind of goes uh, behind everybody, really, and it's fairly easy for Blackpool to clear. And uh, Colback trying to get to that first and did a really good job. He had to get there, and he has, and now he crosses himself early into the penalty area. Ekpateta stretches and takes it away from his goalkeeper and apologises, and Forrest will have another corner. That was brilliant from Colback, because if he hadn't got to that uh, clearance from Blackpool, there <laughs> were three charging at him. He was off. If he caught one, yeah. If he missed the ball. Um, in fact, I think the, the Blackpool player did him a big favour. I think he sort of saw Jack come in and, and went, no, not, don't fancy it. Scarpa with the corner again, this time into the near post, headed away, back to Scarpa, who brings it down, quickly closed down. It'll go out for a forest throw. Scarpa wanting to get on with it, wanting to take the throw, but actually decides he's going to leave it for Harry Toffolo. 33 minutes played. 1-0 to Blackpool, but Forrest have had plenty of opportunities since they fell behind. That's not the best of crosses, though, from Toffolo, and is easily cleared by Carey. Bangs it long down the field, all the way through in the end to Wayne Hennessy. Hennessy gives it to Cook, and Cook out to the right-hand side for Nico Williams. Infield to Fuster on halfway, and he gives it back to Williams and back to Cook 
inside his own half. Blackpool 1, Forest 0. Start of a busy week on uh, BBC Radio Nottingham Sport. Over the next few days, plenty of football coming up for you. Here's Toffolo, left-hand side, into the feet of Surridge, just inside the box. He back heels to O'Brien, sets it up for Scarpa to shoot, deflected into the path of Williams. Great save by Maxwell, diving away to his right. That was goal-bound from Nico Williams. It looked like it was going in, and Maxwell dive to his right and gets it clear with a parry and Blackpool clear and it's well won again by Colback and here's Williams, little ball into the penalty area looking for Dennis, down goes the defender and that'll be a free kick, Thornley it is who's been clattering into Sam Surridge over the last five minutes, gets a little tug from Dennis, goes down and it's uh, going to be a free kick to Blackpool good effort from Nico Williams, good save by the goalkeeper yeah it was, both those ball fell kindly Williams ran on to hit, hit it very, very sweet. Nice height for the goalkeeper and just inside the post. And uh, he managed to just take a step in and get a strong hand on it. And uh, the ball was ricocheting around. And unfortunately for Dennis, he just laid, a, he laid too much of a glove on the, on the centre half and he, he fell over. And that, that just lost their momentum a little bit. But a lot better from Forrest. People taking a little bit more responsibility with the ball and uh, hopefully they can they can get the ball forward um, because Dennis has certainly got the, the measure of it and uh, Sturridge, is having a, uh, Sturridge, Sturridge is having a really good game uh, causing problems all over the pitch So Blackpool 1, Forest 0 it's uh, Mansfield 2, Barrow 0 on 95.5 FM on our uh, internet commentary this afternoon at the BBC Sport website it's Aldershot nil, Notts County 1 as McKenna loses his way here and Blackpool at race forward right side. Cross comes in near post, blocked by Cook, away from Beasley but hits O'Brien and goes behind for a Blackpool corner. Blackpool haven't done much towards the Forest goal since they scored after 16 minutes but here they are with another opportunity from a set piece. Patino walks across to take it. Elsewhere in the cup, uh, Sheffield United now 2 0 up against Millwall. Brighton back in front against Middlesbrough. Middlesbrough 1, Brighton 2. And Chesterfield have equalised against West Brom again. That's 2 2. Here's Patino with the corner in towards the near post, and Surridge gets up, heads it away, comes out for Carey, but it's blocked by Scarpa, and Carey has to go all the way back into his own half, and Husband goes all the way back to Maxwell, the goalkeeper, who clears right footed, sliced out into touch so Forrest end up with the ball back uh, Fulham have just gone in front as well at Hull Hull City nil Fulham one here Forrest a goal down here's O'Brien switching it out to the right hand side for Williams just a few yards into the Blackpool half but as he controls it he comes back into his own half eight minutes to go until half time Steve Cook captain's armband waving players away from him and then uh, turns it to his left and slightly backwards for McKenna, who finds O'Brien on halfway. Not a good ball, but O'Brien gets a second chance at it as uh, Lavery knocked it away from Toffolo. Now Colback looking for the feet of Dennis, but Epiteta gets to it first. And here is uh, Lyons. Toffolo gets a foot in. Blackpool still have it, though. This is Sonny Carey. Gives it back to Lyons. Good tackle this time by O'Brien. And it goes out for... That's, uh, James Linnington says will be a Blackpool throw. Andy Lyons to take. And QPR now in front at Fleetwood as well, just down the road, and up the coast. Blackpool wanting another free kick for a foul on Beasley. Nothing doing this time, and Forrest have it. And this is Colback. Colback across into Blackpool territory and knocks it wide right for Williams. Williams. Holds it up halfway inside the Blackpool half, turns it backwards for Fuster and back to halfway for Cook. Goals flying in in the cup. Burnley now leading again at Bournemouth by two goals to one. Scarpa tries to help this on quickly to Williams. Foot in from Husband, goes out for a throw, which Williams takes 35 yards out. Throws it backwards for Scarpa. Scarpa switches play to the left hand side. He's looking for Toffolo, but I think he's asking too much of him this time. He is. And uh, Lyons just lets it run out for a throw to Blackpool 10 yards from the corner flag now he's told to go a little bit further back the uh, home sections of Bloomfield Road are not suggesting that cup fever or the visit of Forest have uh, particularly interested the 
Blackpool fans not having a good season. Three home wins here all season in the championship relegation zone, as I mentioned earlier. Haven't won for the last nine games. And so uh, there's uh, plenty of empty orange seats in the three stands around the ground. Uh, not so in the away section where three and a half thousand Forest fans are making plenty of noise. Scarpa is bundled into by Patino and it'll be a free kick for Forest. Ten yards inside the Blackpool half, maybe a bit further than that. And left of centre. It just carries it a little bit further forward. Scarpa and rolls it square to Nico Williams. Williams lofts one down the inside left channel. Dennis gets up, wins the first header. Toffolo looking for the second, but it's headed away from him at the expense of another corner. Have a little ball in there, just a little flick over the top. And Toffolo couldn't just, just come down for him in time. Uh, but a bit better, Scarpa having a nice little influence on the game at the moment. See if his corner can produce something. Scarpa takes the corner in towards the near post. Surridge flicks it towards goal. But, uh, it's comfortably caught by Maxwell, straight at him from the angle. And it's remaining 1 0 to Blackpool. Fleetwood equaliser straight away against QPR. Fleetwood won, QPR won in the FA Cup third round this afternoon. Goals flying in, Forrest could do with one, at least one. And they've come close with Dennis hitting the bar, Scarpa having an effort, Surridge round the last man and into the box to fire into the side netting. Fuster's deflected shot saved. Mika Williams shot dealt with well again by Chris Maxwell, the Blackpool goalkeeper. So Forrest have had their opportunities as Scarpa looks to win the ball again just inside his own half but loses out. He was double teamed actually, there were two Blackpool players and now here's James Husband. Ten yards inside the uh, Forest half. And now that's given away and Dennis on halfway. Scampers forward through the Blackpool half and is brought down by Ian Perveda. And on loan from Leeds. Uh, dragged down Dennis after an errant pass had seen Emmanuel Dennis just pick up the loose ball and it'll be a free kick Forrest about halfway inside the uh, Blackpool half and right of centre and Gustavo Scarpa stands over it Chesterfield 3, West Brom 2 now in the FA Cup that's not a bad first half is it here's Scarpa He's uh, firing one in towards the back post and there's no touch or if there was it was only a very faint touch from Steve Cook who was the target. Fizzed in from Scarpa. And I'm not sure Cook got anything on it. If he did it was the faintest of glances and it goes behind for a goal kick. He has shown some nice delivery hasn't he? And that was a real whip into that far post area and Cook just, just ran away from him fractionally. Um, Probably the nearest that Forrest have been for five or ten minutes. Uh, game's quietened down a little bit again, but hopefully between now and half-time they can just have a little spell Forrest and try and get something back before half-time. Kenner has to send this one back and it's cleared first time by Hennessy. Uh, Patino underneath it wins the header, but it goes out for a Forrest throw. Just a couple of minutes to go until half-time. Williams takes it just inside his own half to Scarpa. Scarpa looks for crossfield ball out towards the left hand side it's a good ball to Toffolo Toffolo gives it to Dennis who's wide left level with the edge of the Blackpool penalty area Jinx outside away from one at the corner of the box rolls it into Lewis O'Brien but O'Brien can't get it under control maybe it was just too far ahead of him and it goes through to Chris Maxwell once again just that final decision that final little pass letting Forrest down in a great position there players getting into around the box and Brian making the run but the pass just couldn't find him Burnley have now got a third goal Bournemouth one Burnley three as Nico Williams goes back and defends inside his own half but he then loses out having won it he lost it to CJ Hamilton but uh, now Fuster is challenged ball breaks free for O'Brien then they need Colback as well to help out Colback running between challenges and then catches husband he overran it, did Colback in the end, and then he's caught Husband, who's gone 
over and over and over as he rolls, but now he's getting back to his knees and he's going to be OK. And he did catch him, Jack Colback, and he's going to get a yellow card in the last minute of the first half. Yeah, we've seen that before, Jack. Just overrun it and kept going, didn't he? Just didn't give it up. Uh, times when you just got to just stop yourself. You know you're going to get booked, you know you're going to, you can't get to the ball. And that could potentially, I would, I would say if you were in the Premier League, that could potentially be a sending off as a reckless, as a reckless studs up tackle. Um, so you just have to be careful, you have to learn. That sometimes you have to pull out of tackles and it, it, it's not easy for when well, it's not your nature to do that. But uh, yeah, I just got a yellow card call back. But, um, yeah, Forrest has just gone off the ball a little bit. They've had a couple of spells in this first half where they've looked a, a really nice team. They've passed the ball around nicely. Um, and there have been times when they've looked defensively particularly distinctly average and they got caught out on one of those uh, for the Blackpool goal. It's like Scarpa is pushed but the referee waves play on and Husband who's perfectly okay sends one down the left hand side CJ Hamilton fizzes across through the forest box and it goes right through the forest box and out into touch on the far side for Harry Toffolo to take a throw about 10 yards from his corner flag 90 seconds remaining of stoppage time, only playing two minutes of added time in this first half. As uh, O'Brien loses out in midfield, Lyon sends it forward to Lavery, left, uh, right side for Blackpool. It's blocked by uh, Toffolo and spins out for a Blackpool corner. Second goal here for Blackpool just before half time would give Forrest much hard work to do in the second half. Cross goes Charlie Patino to take said corner from Blackpool's right-hand side. They lead 1-0 in stoppage time at the end of the first half. Patino left-footed towards the back post over everybody. CJ Hamilton chases after it and keeps the ball in play though near the corner flag where it goes completely out of our view. Battles going on near that corner flag. It's sent back to Ian Paveda left edge of the penalty area, rolls it back towards Carey, good foot in from Scarpa then Surridge battling for it as well, sent wide right though for Blackpool, knocked down the inside right channel hits the byline does uh, Carey and it needs McKenna to make the challenge, that's as good a sequence as Blackpool have put together in the first half nice passing men in down the channels Forrest stretched and it results in another corner and the uh, Jimmy Armfield stand then the way to our left hand side Charlie Patino to put the cross in again Hennessy comes and claims and it's a good claim over a crowd of bodies and that is the last action of the first half and Blackpool go in leading by a goal to nil a goal scored by Marvin Ekpateta but the assist really came from Lewis O'Brien across was drifting harmlessly beyond everybody and O'Brien at the back post almost inexplicably heading back across the face of his own goal and then Marvin Ekpateta fired in from about 10 yards out to give Blackpool the lead after a, a scrappy first 16 minutes there'd been maybe a, a chance at either end for husband for Blackpool and uh, for Nico Williams at the other end but after Forrest had gone behind there were plenty of opportunities carved out by Forrest uh, Emmanuel Dennis is shot from the left of the penalty area curling onto the crossbar Scarpa with an effort from just outside the box straight at the keeper Surridge went round the last man knocked it one side of him ran round the other side into the box and fired into the side netting Fuster shot deflected and saved Williams shot after a good move from Forrest and the ball into the box had been stabbed away Williams with the low shot towards the bottom corner and probably the best save of the half coming from Chris Maxwell to deny the red so They've had their efforts on goal, having gone behind, but Steve Sutton, they have plenty to do at half-time. Yes, uh, they've, they've looked like a team that, that hasn't played together. It, it was uncoordinated for 10-15 for minutes where people are getting just to know how, how it's going to be. Um, obviously, this team brought together for this game. Um, experienced team, but they just haven't, it just hasn't gelled for them for a long period. Um, the, the, the two little sections in the game where they did play well, they did play well as well and they tore Blackpool apart. Uh, mainly it was uh, Emmanuel Dennis down the left-hand side that was able to 
create things and he had a, a shot off the crossbar which was a, a decent effort and the ball broke out they couldn't make anything of it Williams cut inside had a shot didn't really trouble the goalkeeper Williams again had another shot with his right foot which is a decent shot um, so it sort of came all together but defensively uh, too many mistakes um, Hamilton gets in too easily on the left hand side they don't finish they don't deal with the cross at the far post ball comes in headed back up in the air and it just it was a catalogue of errors really for the goal and a catalogue of errors for two or three times that the Mansfield uh, sorry Blackpool have got the ball uh, into the box so it's not been a great first half of Forest. they've had chances um, they're not out of it by any stretch of the imagination and I think if they can if they can just get it together for a 10 minute spell they can get themselves back in this game and probably go on and win it yeah I mean that the, the difficulty is that it is a classic away from home FA Cup tie isn't it they noticed earlier they, they didn't water the pitch at all it, it looks quite dry <laughs> it's a bit bobbly yeah there's and, and what Blackpool are doing well is that Forrest are not having a second on the ball. There's there's no time. It's very uh, harem scarem in that middle of the park, isn't it? And it, it kind of needs somebody to, to take control of that situation. Well, absolutely. And, and if you're looking at it from Blackpool's point of view, it's been a perfect first half for them. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Get into the faces. Don't give Forrest. They'll think they they'll think the big time coming here, um, especially what they did last year. Um, get into the faces don't give them a second let's see how they like it they're not used to it now they're not used to that in your face sort of stuff so um, you know they just get on with it and you know Blackpool I don't think can do that for 90, 90 minutes so Forrest will get some chances uh, we shall see what Forrest can do then about this situation 1-0 down at half time after uh, Steve Sutton said a catalogue of errors at the back presented Marvin Ekpeteta with the chance to put his side in front his second goal of the campaign it came after 16 minutes and that is the difference at the break Forrest need to step it up again in the second half here at Bloomfield Road at half time they trail Blackpool by a goal to nil this is match day on BBC Radio Nottingham. Mixed fortunes for our local side so far then. Here uh, at the seaside of Blackpool. Blackpool lead Forest by a goal to nil. But the Reds have had plenty of chances in that, including uh, Emmanuel Dennis hitting the bar and Sam Surridge going close on a, on a couple of occasions. But Forest yet to find the net, you would think. Uh, the amount of chances they've been creating, especially uh, in the last half an hour of that uh, first half, that a, an equaliser surely uh, will be forthcoming. Uh, let's catch up with how Mansfield and Notts County have been getting on in that first 45 minutes then. It looks like Craig Armstrong finally might get to see Mansfield Town win whilst working for BBC Radio Nottingham. Surely they're not going to throw it away from here, Craig. Why would you say that? <laughs> Why would you say it? Jake, Jake, Jake said that they've never gone in uh, leading 2 0 and they go and score to make it 2 1, and now you said that. Why? <laughs> Um, but I mean, come on, 2-0 up against the team that beaten twice already this season. I hope I'm not setting them up for a fall, but at 2-0 up at the break at home, I mean, surely, surely, t tell me how good the first half's been. You know, the first half's been excellent um, for every man defensively um, in midfield. I think that at the moment, the win in the game midfield, the, 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 the trio of, um, of Maris and Boateng and Quinn have been excellent. The front three have caused problems to the back four. What they've done really well is they've just not allowed Barrow, other than the goal they've, con they've conceded from a, a free kick, they've not allowed um, they've not allowed any ball to rest, any any centre forward to get a hold of the ball, and they've nick picked and picked balls up on the on the front foot, and they've just been excellent. All right, I won't tempt fate anymore. Um, I, I will leave it there for now, just in case. Uh, Craig Armstrong, uh, best to look for the second half. Uh, my thoughts are with you. Mansfield leading by two goals to nil. Uh, if you missed it earlier, Craig Armstrong has done best part of a dozen games for, for BBC Red and Nottingham this season. You get to see Mansfield win somehow. Uh, Mark Stallard has seen not win plenty. Uh, and on course again today. How's the first half been, Stell? Yeah, it's been good for, from a notch perspective. Um, slightly, slightly sort of... Uh, indifferent first 10 minutes or so a little bit nervy but um, after that they, they sort of controlled the games grew into the game controlled the tempo 
had loads of possession as you expect of Notts to do and got the goal most importantly got that goal Jim O'Brien the man on the spot to profit after Aaron the man again the creator down the right hand side Macaulay Langstaff's shot was blocked but fell to Jim O'Brien and made no mistake and from then on it's been almost total Notts control the only downside slightly being that they've not created too many clear cut opportunities plenty of possession plenty of shots plenty of balls into the box only other chance I can remember is really a Macaulay Langstaff header that he headed too close to Ashby Hammond the older shot goalkeeper but it's been a controlled Notts performance and hopefully more goals to come in the second half all right thank you very much indeed Mark Stellard controlled uh, the word of the day for Notts County then with the Magpies uh, a goal up the second half will continue online remember on the BBC Sport website there is a link on our Twitter at BBC RNS Notts County leading by a goal to nil Mansfield 2-0 up at half time Forest a goal down here at Blackpool I'll run you through all the other scores in just a moment it's 5-4 on BBC iPlayer. The last few years all seemed a bit easier somehow, hasn't it? We move on, don't we? Catherine Kaywood is back, and so is an old enemy. Got some intel for you from the prison. You're not going to like it. Tommy Lee Royce. How do? He's a narcissist. He's a psychopath. He's using you, and you're letting him. I get it's complicated, but he's my dad. The final series of Happy Valley. What I'd like is for you and me to spend some time together. Continues tomorrow on BBC iPlayer. Match day. BBC Radio Nottingham. Uh, I was getting a little carried away with uh, Mansfield. 2 0 up they were at one stage, 2 1, of course, uh, at the break. Second half continues on 95.5 FM with Jake Garner and Craig Armstrong in the next few minutes. 2 1, uh, they uh, they lead Notts County, uh, leading by a goal to nil. Elsewhere in the FA Cup, then, Forest losing here. Uh, Accrington of League One are winning 1 0 at National League. Boreham Wood. Um, I think a lot of people looking at that as a possible shock in the Cup today, but uh, Boreham Wood, uh, the home side, trailing by a goal to nil. Uh, Burnley, would this be a shock? To the top of the championship, 3-1 up away at Premier League Bournemouth. Uh, but uh, every chance that those two could swap next season, of course, divisions. What about this? Chesterfield going well in the National League, 3-2 up over Championship West Brom and an informed Championship side in West Brom as well. Uh, West Brom were a goal up through Thomas Asante after just two minutes as well. Uh, Chesterfield equalised on a seven. West Brom back ahead on 17, but two goals uh, late on in that first half mean it's Chesterfield three, West Brom two at half-time. Uh, Fleetwood one, QPR one at the break. Hull nil, Fulham one. I think a few people looking at Hull maybe to knock out a Premier League side, but Fulham uh, going well in the top flight this season are a goal up in East Yorkshire. Ipswich are beating Rotherham by a goal to nil. Middlesbrough one, Brighton two. Uh, Sheffield United a 2 0 up at Millwall at the break, and it's Shrewsbury nil, Sunderland nil. Later on tonight, uh, Brentford West Ham in an all Premier League game at half past five. Uh, Coventry against Wrexham, a one some many people think maybe will be a, an upset there for National League Wrexham to uh, to go through. Grimsby against Burton, Luton Wigan, then Sheffield Wednesday against Newcastle. Wednesday going well in League One, Newcastle going well in the top flight. Fascinating one that kicks off at six, and Liverpool Wolves at eight. Uh, already finished in the lunchtime kickoff. Southampton surprisingly beating a full strength Palace 2-1 at Selhurst Park. Leicester. Avoided a shot, Kalechi Iheanacho with his 16th FA Cup goal. Nobody since Iheanacho made his debut in the competition six years ago. Nobody has scored more FA Cup goals than him. Preston 3, Huddersfield 1, Reading 2, Watford 0. And Tottenham beating Portsmouth by a goal to nil. That victory given to them thanks to a goal from this man, Harry Kane. It was a tough game. Obviously, we were clear favourites and probably people expected it to be a, a bigger scoreline. But credit to them, you know, they... They stayed compact and they made it difficult and it, it was just tough, you know, even when we got the goal we thought it'd open up a bit but they done well to kind of stop us getting that second one. So overall, uh, good to get through to the next round, that's the, the main objective um, and then see who we get next. Yeah, they hung in the game well, didn't they? Restricting goal scoring opportunities, not very many of them during the game, not clear cut chances anyway. Was was patience key today? There wasn't much for you in that first half? Yeah, I think so. I think we said at half time just to maybe uh, put a couple more players further forward the midfielders maybe uh, getting higher up the pitch uh, because there was no real threat uh, in behind from them so uh, we've done that and then obviously we got the goal at a, a good time but um, yeah still room for improvement for sure but overall 
uh, we got through, which was the most important. Talk me through the goal from your point of view. It looked like you only had one thing on your mind. Yeah, no, uh, I wanted to get on the ball more, so I dropped into that kind of space there and played a nice one-two with uh, Ceci. And then, uh, yeah, just caught it, caught it really nice. Kind of the space opened up and uh, it was nice to see it hit the net. Number two, six, five for Tottenham, as I'm sure you're more than well aware, just the one behind Jimmy Greaves now. And you, you scored that goal on exactly the same day of the year that he scored his 265th. Are you, is that whole record in your mind or do you try to just ignore it because you know that you'll get there at some point? Yeah, I try to not think about it. Sometimes I feel like if you think too much to, to try and achieve something, it almost goes the other way. So um, obviously I feel in good form, I feel fit. Uh, and we've got plenty of games coming up, so um, i just got to go into each game trying to help the team. That's always been my mindset and uh, hopefully the goals will come. And good to see uh, Harry Kane's feeling fit, um, unlike the BBC Radio Nottingham sports team by the end of today, I would suggest. After fish and chips for lunch and Haribo for during the game, <laughs> we've just been brought um, a big pie. So uh, the uh, the January diet is, uh, as Steve Sutton suggested before the game, very much going to have to wait. Uh, but um, a, a pie it is for the second half. So uh, on we go and uh, we can uh, scrap any idea of uh, uh, getting rid of that weight picked up over Christmas. Uh, that can very much wait. Uh, it's BBC Radio Nottingham, four o'clock. Loads of sport coming up for you over the next week on BBC Radio Nottingham. Tuesday night, Notts County back in action at Meadow Lane. Uh, Boreham Wood, I'll bring you match night live from Meadow Lane from seven with full match commentary on that one. Then on Wednesday night, remember Forest in the League Cup quarterfinals up against Wolves. On Saturday, Forest and Mansfield both in action commentary on those and then Notts on Sunday. So uh, four uh, football matches for you, four uh, well, five matches, uh, four programmes for you next week to look forward to. Here, the players are just making their way back out. So time to make your choice of commentary for the second half. Online, you've got Knotts at Aldershot, where Knotts lead by a goal to nil. 95.5 FM, Mansfield against Barrow. They lead 2-1. Craig Armstrong and Jake Garner. And on digital radio, 103.8 FM in the FA Cup third round from here at Bloomfield Road. It's Blackpool 1, Forest nil. And the second half on the way with Steve Sutton and Colin Frey. Match day. BBC Radio Nottingham. Yes, the team's out here at Bloomfield Road. Blackpool 1, Forest 0 at half time. So Forest with uh, plenty to do. As the fans give us their second half rendition of Moluk Intire. Three and a half thousand of them are uh, here by the seaside, getting ready to watch the second half. No changes made by either manager at uh, half time, not by Michael Appleton. He'll, of course, be very happy with the way the first half went, and Steve Cooper resisting the uh, opportunity to make changes at the break, sending out the same players who started the game. And it is Forrest who are going to kick us off in their. Uh, all navy blue kit with the flecks of orange and lighter blue in their shirts blackpool in their tangerine shirts white shorts tangerine socks and the referee james linnington gets us underway with a blow of his whistle in this second half it's headed on by surridge towards dennis down the left wing and uh, down goes the blackpool defender just out of our vision away to our left hand side near the corner flag and that will be uh, a free kick early in the second half for Blackpool Forrest then with Hennessy in goal Williams Cook McKenna and Toffolo across the back four Colback O'Brien and Fuster are the uh, three in midfield Fuster being Billy Fuster the 19 year old making his professional debut today and then Scarpa in the number 10 role behind Dennis and Surridge up front for Forrest. Here is uh, Williams hoisting this high into the darkening sky. Dennis trying to win it on halfway but is outnumbered, loses out. Colback having to get back and hold things up. Now here's Shane Lavery for Blackpool. Level with the edge of the Forest box down there, right hand side. Crossing, deflects. McKenna heads it away. 
O'Brien trying to keep it in play, but in doing so, gives it away to Carey, whose first time cross is headed clear nicely by Williams to Scarpa. Scarpa nutmegs Carey, I think more by luck than judgment, and now here's Lewis O'Brien striding forward. O'Brien to his left for Emmanuel Dennis. Dennis bearing down on the penalty area, low ball in, blocked by Et Pateta. Comes out again for Toffolo left side. Toffolo into uh, O'Brien's feet, just inside the box. Gives it to Dennis. Dennis looking to try and get it onto his right foot to curl one, and in the end, went for power and blasts it high and wide and away for a goal kick. Second minute of the second half, 1-0 Blackpool. Well, we've seen De <coughs> excuse me, Dennis do this. Is that pie gone down this, the wrong way? That pie's gone around the wrong way. <laughs> it's a very nice cheese pie. I'm, very not sure, I'm not sure there is such a thing. I was very excited. <laughs> um, but not as excited as was when Dennis cut inside there. Uh, he tried to really take the laces out of it and instead of just giving it a nice little curl in the top corner, he tried to power it away. But uh, a positive start from Forrest to start this second half. Uh, Surridge on halfway, battling for the ball and Sonny Carey comes across and volleys it sideways with so much force that it cannons against the glass doors of one of the uh, executive boxes right at the top of the Stan Matthews stand on the far side here at Bloomfield Road that's the uh, the seaside if you like tower away to our right hand side northwards and Forrest in possession of the ball with Harry Toffolo inside his own half giving it O'Brien and he tucks it back for Scott McKenna Forrest subs Joe Worrell, Oral Mangala, Loic Cumbeso, Brennan Johnson, Ryan Yates, Renan Loddy uh, goalkeeper Dean Henderson and then a couple of young players in Detlef Asapa Osong, the striker, just uh, 18 years of age, and 20 year old midfielder Ollie Hammond. Here's McKenna forward down the left hand side. He's looking for Dennis. It's headed by Ek Pateta, who uh, gets enough on it to turn it back to Chris Maxwell, who has to come along his byline, a good 20 yards or so from his goal sideways, if you like, and manages to claim it before it goes out for what would have been a corner uh, Mansfield 2 Barrow 1 in the early stages of the uh, second half on 95.5 FM and on our uh, online commentary this afternoon it's Aldershot 0 Notts County 1 Jim O'Brien with that goal in the first half ball is loose just inside Forest half and McKenna gets to it first and gives it to O'Brien across halfway O'Brien being closed down by Lavery holds on to it now gives it Scarpa Scarpa at the edge of the penalty area checks out onto his left foot his shot is blocked comes out for O'Brien finds a good ball to Toffolo Toffolo with a cross over hits it way over hits it actually and it goes out of play virtually on first bounce on the far side for a throw but that was good football from Forrest right from the moment McKenna got to the loose ball first inside his own half Unfortunately, that final ball into the penalty area or across the face of golf from Toffolo was well over hit. And it remains 1-0 to Blackpool. Throw near their own corner flag. It's headed by Fuster infield and Carey then nods it away. Williams brings it down, looking for Fuster again. Midway inside the Blackpool half. Fuster uh, through challenges, lays it back to halfway for Cook and now McKenna across the halfway line to the left of the centre circle into the feet of Scarpa Scarpa on the half turn and now gets it onto his left foot fires it into the feet of Dennis Dennis taking it away from defenders having to go away from the penalty area to keep possession but does so well and now finds Nico Williams wide right level with the edge of the box Williams trying to take his men on little nutmeg to try and get away from CJ Hamilton but Hamilton has had a good game today for Blackpool both in an attacking sense and here defensively and he wins it off Nico Williams and then plays it off Nico Williams and wins his team a throw which uh, James Husband is fullback he's now going to take 15 yards or so from the corner flag one in the air by Williams but sent forward again by the Tangerines only as far as McKenna who wins it Fuster heads forward Thornley heads it away for Blackpool Cook wins the next header Scarpa tries to bring it down Fuster sends it to Surridge who lays it off for Scarpa right side lays it down the right hand side for Dennis Dennis at the byline keeps the ball in play holds on to it tries to feed it through in between two defenders can't do so gets a ricochet still got it but going back towards halfway Williams infield now to Colback back in the middle of the uh, Blackpool half he gives it wide right for Dennis once again Dennis 
teasing against his man near the byline goes one way then the other hits the byline wriggles through challenges sent back for Surridge who lofts it over the top from six yards out great play from Emmanuel Dennis in the end he tried it once the ball went all the way out all the way back to him this time he took his man on on the outside went along the byline pulled it back and for all the world it looked like Sam Surridge was going to put Forrest level it's yeah, over and probably should have done yeah it came at him rather quickly but um, a, a good chance from probably seven yards difficult just to tell from here a lot of players in the box but uh, Dennis doing really well down that right hand side he played more down the left in the first half um, but playing down the right on the on the second half and uh, he keeps getting the ball Scapa keeps getting the ball into him O'Brien does well for him Colbert does well for him to keep giving him the ball and that was a better decision that he made there than he did the time before here's CJ Hamilton running onto a loose ball which has played across by Colbert behind his man and Colbert hands, holds his hand up in apology as Forrest get back and smother out the danger but it will be a Blackpool throw down the left hand side a Barrow equaliser now at uh, Field Mill Mansfield 2 Barrow 2 here come Blackpool to the edge of the penalty area shot by Pervader is uh, blocked and cleared by Toffolo sent forward again first time uh, by uh, Thornley from halfway and it goes all the way through to Wayne Hennessy so two apiece now Mansfield were 2-0 ahead but now it's 2-2 two -two. still older shot nil Notts County 1 and uh, give you a rundown of the FA Cup scores from the three o'clock kickoffs in a few minutes time here's Nico Williams under pressure from CJ Hamilton but turning away from him inside his own half Fuster turning backwards to Steve Cook looks as if he's limping a bit Steve Cook now McKenna for Toffolo I think Cook might be struggling a bit just uh, bends down puts his hands on his knees McKenna clears but it's half blocked that clearance and Forrest have to battle for it in midfield yeah sure enough there goes Joe Worrell off the bench to start warming up here's Emmanuel Dennis from halfway couple of step overs rolls it infield to Fuster Fuster switches play left hand side for Toffolo who can't keep it in play and it just spins away from him and goes out into touch for a Blackpool throw midway inside their own half 1-0 to Blackpool eight minutes nearly nine played in the second half and Andy Lyons throws down the line towards Beasley McKenna wins it Cook forward to Scarpa Scarpa couldn't get it under control and it's thumped away and uh, there's Beasley chasing after it and McKenna with a good header under pressure back to Wayne Hennessy had to get that right did uh, Scott McKenna did so and it's rolled out to Cook Cook down the right hand side I think that's sliced and it's going to run away from Surridge he's struggling yeah he's really struggling yeah he's limping again yeah. is Steve Cook yeah and what is uh, he did when he seemed to run all right but when he kicked it there whether he's tweaked his knee or his ankle um, he had a bit of a tussle down on the right hand side of the box there just earlier in this half and that's just caused him a few problems Good ball from Fuster on the turn to Nico Williams. And then Williams overhits the pass forward to Dennis and it goes through to Chris Maxwell. 1 0, Blackpool continue to lead. And in the FA Cup third round, Chris Forrest had such a good time in this competition last year on their own pitch. Four home draws, three good wins, and then a narrow defeat to Liverpool in the quarter final. They also had such a good time on this pitch last year in the league. But things are very different for both sides these days and the scoreline is uh, pretty different today as well with Blackpool leading Forest by a goal to nil McKenna heads away Scarpa tries to get it under control but showed too much of it to Sonny Carey and Blackpool have it again it's played back into Carey by husband he goes back to Thornley Thornley out wide left for Carey tucked back first time and cleared by Patino but controlled by Williams rolls it forward to Dennis good flick from Dennis then a first time ball from O'Brien to get Toffolo away left side Toffolo fires over the cross and O'Brien shoots towards the top corner and just wide he was on the stretch as Toffolo pulled it back O'Brien sliding in eight or nine yards out and trying to divert it towards the top corner and it just faded away and went wide of the target only just 
Forest close to levelling things. Yeah, they were. That's the best player that they've had. Just moved that ball quickly, didn't it? One touch, two touch. That's what they should be doing. And just moving the ball across the across the legs. And uh, thought Toffolo had lost a chance, but he got a great ball across. O'Brien stretching. Looks if it might just sneak in the top corner, but drifted away. And uh, this might help Forest a little bit with their passing as a storm comes in. The heavens have opened. That might just help move the ball a little bit quicker for them. Yeah, they promised showers throughout the course of the afternoon, and this is the first one we've had, I think. And it is sweeping across Bloomfield Road as Charlie Patino has the ball for Blackpool inside his own half. He's under pressure from Scarpa, who wins it. Scarpa nicks it away from him, and suddenly it's three against two. Scarpa's ball, Emmanuel Dennis, it's saved somehow, comes out for O'Brien, and it's blocked by a combination of Ekpateta and Maxwell, and goes behind for a corner. How has Emmanuel Dennis not put Forrest in front? Somehow, Blackpool managed to keep it out. Lovely play from Scarpa, lovely ball from Scarpa, on a plate for Dennis, and the goalkeeper comes out to smother him, and then on the rebound, it's blocked and goes out for a corner. From the right-hand side, Scarpa to take. 12, nearly 13 minutes played, second half. Scarpa in towards the near post, powerful header away by Thornley. Colback. Retrieves, 10 yards inside the Blackpool half. He's coming left-hand side, this towards this near side where the Forest fans are massed. Challenge on Dennis, goes out of play, and Forest will win a throw, and Blackpool are going to take the chance to make their first substitution. And they're going to bring on Jerry Yates, the top goal scorer. He's got nine this season, and he's going to replace Jake Beasley. Great chance for Emmanuel Dennis oh, to see something. But it did he need to take a touch? I don't think he did, because he gave the goalkeeper time to close him down. And the defender time. He just got a... Oh, what a ball from Scarper. He won it himself, had a little... Just nicked it off the defender. Ran through. Beautiful pass. Um, I think he just has to take that first time. If he's, a, if he's a striker in real form and scoring goals, you take that first time, nick it over the goalkeeper. It's obviously very very low on confidence in front of goal he's done well outside the box but in front of goal he looks a little bit shy with that and uh, yeah that should be uh, that should be forest level as it is blackpool still lead here's o'brien inside the blackpool half he's gone backwards for colback who's having to run a long way to uh, get away from the new substitute jerry yates and now cook who seems to have just shaken off that knock that he took he's not limping anywhere near as heavily back goes Williams to his goalkeeper Hennessy clears left side to uh, McKenna McKenna forward to Surridge who gets up well and nods it down and then plays it infield to O'Brien O'Brien square Gustavo Scarpa onto his left foot always rising from 25 yards and over the crossbar so much better from Forrest though now well they're moving the ball quickly aren't they they're, they're, they're just absolutely passing the ball one touch two touch and, and look as if they want to run round and that's made a big difference. I think Scapp has done really, really well. He looks as if he's a player that can... We've been asking for somebody that can turn something out of nothing, and he looks as if he can do that with a trick, a flick, a pass. He's had a couple of beautiful passes today. He had a shot himself there, and I don't blame him. Sits nicely on his left foot, 25 yards, have a dip, nothing to lose. It uh, looks as if he could be an interesting player. Here come Forrest again, although this time there's a challenge, then uh, O'Brien wins it back again and Scarpa lays it off for Fuster, 10 yards inside the Blackpool half. Notts County have gone 2-0 ahead uh, in uh, their game in the National League at Aldershot this afternoon. Sent forward by Forrest towards Dennis, it didn't come for Dennis because it was headed away from him by Jordan Thornley, who's had a good game at the back for Blackpool so far this afternoon. There are 30 minutes remaining here at Bloomfield Road. That's uh, Ruben Rodriguez who scored that second goal for Notts County. They lead 2-0. You can hear it live on the BBC Sport website. You can also uh, find the link on our Twitter feed at BBC RNS. Now they lead 2-0. Mansfield have been pegged back from 2-0 up against Barrow and it's 2-2. That's our 95.5 FM commentary here. Forest Trail Blackpool in the cup and a shot just dipping over the crossbar from 
he and Poveda. Well, it's just loops over. I think Hennessy had it covered. It was a long way out, and it remains 1-0. Oh, I'm not sure he did, unless he knew it was going over. Um, but that was a, just shows you how this game can be. Forrest have been all over it. Uh, all of a sudden, Blackpool far too easily get the ball in, get the ball at the edge of the box, and uh, get a shot away. Really, really, at times, Forrest, they make you so frustrated because they play so well. They, they can't keep that tempo going for long enough to really get it going. That one-touch, two-touch football, then all of a sudden they give the opposition a chance. I mean, we've seen that in every in every Premiership game, haven't we? I know this isn't the Premiership team that will turn out next week, but even so, as a as a group of players, sometimes it's just far too easy for the opposition to get chances on the goal. There are uh, a few Forest subs out warming up at the moment as the ball is lofted forward by Blackpool but that'll run out tamely for a uh, a goal kick Ryan Yates has just been called back uh, to the bench Joe Worrell has been doing a bit of limbering up because of that Steve Cook injury I think I've just seen Brennan Johnson out there as well Cook has the boys a high press on now from Blackpool and O'Brien steps away from Lavery to beat that and gives it Toffolo wide left on halfway Toffolo carries it forward into Blackpool territory now gives it to Emmanuel Dennis Dennis is challenged ball goes out of play Dennis wants to take it quickly Fat leaves it for Toffolo Colback had made a good run but uh, Toffolo just delayed a little bit too long gives it to Colback short this time gives it in back Toffolo trying to battle his way through challenges ends up winning another throw this is only about 20 yards out not many options a few people walking away from him at the moment Blackpool leading 1-0, it's thrown in towards O'Brien near the edge of the penalty area, flicked away from him, launched long by Sonny Carey and uh, McKenna needs to get back and sends it back to Hennessy, he's under pressure from Yates, he got a head to it, which he realised wasn't going to be strong enough, oh and then as Nico Williams keeps it in play, he turns it back into his own half and gives it straight to Yates who's in the penalty area and rolls it square and Poveda might just have sent Forrest out to the FA Cup as he taps it in from close range again Forrest masters of their own downfall and this time it's Nico Williams who plays the ball back into his own penalty area and Jerry Yates pounces on it he carries it into the box a little bit further sends it across the face of goal and Ian Paveda knocks it in from close range it's Blackpool 2 Forrest nil, and there are 19 second half minutes played well, just, I have just said, uh, and I hate this when it happens, that Forrest just let teams in so easy. It was a poor pass from Williams. Don't really know what he was looking for. They just got out of the high press, Forrest, and uh, they're just making a substitution. But they they just let the Blackpool in there, trying to get back, and they couldn't get back in. And uh, Pervader there just stuck the ball in the back of the net from three four yards giving Hennessy no chance and uh, they've got a lot to do now have Nottingham Forest yep two goals needed just to force a replay and uh, as I mentioned a little bit earlier how well the FA Cup treated Forest last season how well they played in the FA Cup last season here today they are on the brink of an upset They're, uh, championship fans taunting Forest with their Premier League status just at the moment as here is Toffolo finding O'Brien comes at the end of a what had been a good spell for Forest going forward but just defensively that's twice now I mean O'Brien gets an assist for the Blackpool first goal and Nico Williams for the Blackpool second goal down the right hand side it's played Yates has come on to replace Fuster and uh, Ryan Yates just squaring up to Blackpool player I think it's Patino who uh, no it's not Patino it might be Pervader actually who's just scored the goal who uh, has uh, just gone down rather easily as far as Yates is concerned in trying to buy a goal kick referee wasn't having it though it is a corner and Scarpa's going to take it 
from the far side, the right. Six yard box is absolutely packed. Most of the orange shirts are back inside their own six yard box. Forest have loads forward as well for Scarpa to try and aim at. Only Colback back on halfway. Nico Williams on the edge of the box. And Lewis O'Brien around the penalty spot with Ian Pervader. And it's rolled short to Lewis O'Brien. O'Brien gives it back to Scarpa. Scarpa puts the ball in towards the near post. Ekpeteta gets a touch. It'll come out left wing. And Scott McKenna is playing left winger at the moment. And uh, takes his man on, but then Husband plays it off Toffolo. And that'll go out for a Blackpool throw. And another Forest change on the way. That's Brennan Johnson being made ready. But uh, Charlie Patino first is going off. And he's going to be replaced by Kenny Dougal. So Dougal on for Patino for Blackpool. And uh, for Forrest, it's Lewis O'Brien who makes way. And uh, Brennan Johnson, who comes on. We said at the start that Steve Cooper will be hoping his team can get the job done without the need really of uh, Brennan Johnson but there certainly is a need for him to try and work something here because Blackpool lead by two goals to nil midway through the second half on match day from BBC Radio Nottingham Ryan Yates also on the field as a substitute is fouled uh, wins the free kick and takes it short back to Cook Cook now for McKenna McKenna left of the centre circle gives it Colback and Colback turns it back into his own half for Cook and now he gives it Yates and Yates has got 10 yards or so of space to run into right side plays it forward to Williams Williams with the early ball in he's looking for Surridge Surridge controls but as he's trying to turn it's knocked away from him by Ekpeteta Johnson trying to get hold of it but couldn't and it's uh, chipped away down the left hand side by Kenny Dougal the Australian just come off the bench but pretty aimless and Forrest will go back to pick it up again. Here's Cook sending it towards Surridge. Thornley gets up and heads away. Gustavo Scarpa picks up the second ball and gives it Johnson right side. Corner of the penalty area. Johnson taking on his man and sends it back for Surridge. Who's missed from six yards again? He's lofted over the bar. Johnson's tee up this time. It was Emmanuel Dennis earlier in the day. And Sam Surridge, usually so sure and certain in front of goal. It's the third chance he's had today. Two from virtually the same spot on the pitch with the same result. They both go over the crossbar. The first one in the first half into the side netting and it remains 2-0 to Blackpool. Oh dear, you can't do any more than that. You bring your subs on, they combine to get down the right-hand side. Johnson went past his defenders if he wasn't there. Now a lovely little ball into the edge of the six-yard box. And Surridge really didn't have to do a lot to stick it in. Whether he's trying to be too clever, I don't know whether it's come too quick. But you expect a, a striker of his quality um, he gets in the right position when you expect him to just stick the ball in the net. And uh, Forrest don't get anything. At least they've had the chances. You know, they can look at themselves and think, well... You know, we have had one or two. Yeah, they've had the chances to win the game. Blackpool have had two shots on goal and scored twice. They've been giving Forrest a lesson in finishing, if nothing else. Not over yet. One goal back quickly will make all the difference. But here come Blackpool. Cross halfway. Here's their second goal scorer. Ian Pervader with a cross towards the back post, looking for Yates. Couldn't get on the end of it. It's a low ball in and Yates was trying to get there, couldn't. CJ Hamilton keeps the ball in play on the far side of the field, the left. And now chip forward again towards Hamilton, who drills it low into the bottom corner. It's 3-0 to Blackpool. And suddenly, Forrest are falling apart. It's the cue for dozens and dozens of fans to leave the away section. CJ Hamilton crashes the shot in from wide on the left hand side right across the face of goal and into the bottom corner and it's 3-0 to Blackpool with 19 minutes remaining oh we didn't see that at half time did we 
and expect the Forest to come out, which they did. They've got to have some, they had the chances. And uh, right from one end, Surrey's had a great chance. They've gone down the other end. The ball in, right across the box. And played out at the far side. Uh, well, Williams not covering himself in defensive glory there. And Hamilton, who's, uh, he's done well on that right-hand side, uh, on the left-hand side for, for Blackpool, sorry. Um, he did well enough all afternoon, kept, kept Williams in check. Absolutely lashed it into the bottom corner. Wayne Hennessy, no chance. But, uh, that looks like the the final nail in Forrest's coffin. Take something now, Colin, from, in 19 minutes. We haven't had a shot on target for nearly an hour. Yeah. Plenty wide and high and over. Goalkeepers had to make one or two saves in that first half. But, uh, well, they've had their chances, Forrest. And, um, I mean, I have to say, I don't think Forrest have played particularly well. I have to say 3-0 is harsh. <laughs> but Blackpool, as I just mentioned before, have just been clinical in front of goal. The chances they've had, they've taken. I think that's three shots on goal and three goals. I would agree, yeah. Wayne Hennessy hasn't had another save to make. Come for a couple of crosses, but, yeah, that's had to finish. They're flying now, though, Blackpool. And they're looking to put their Premier League opponents to the sword. Well won by Colback. And he drives forward and he gives it right hand side for Johnson. Johnson charging forward towards the edge of the Blackpool penalty area. Takes on one. Left foot shot. And that's dragged wide. And it was a long way out, Brennan Johnson, when he hit that. Heck Pateta going and arguing with the referee that Colback should have been penalised at the start of that. He fouled deep inside his own half. And it's a goal kick. And uh, time begins to tick away from Forrest. And it looks as if it's ticking away from their FA Cup campaign for this season. 3-0, Blackpool leading. Still 2-2 between Mansfield and Barrow. And Notts County still lead Aldershot by two goals to nil in the National League. Here's CJ Hamilton getting away from Nico Williams again. Both went down. Hamilton got up quickest and rolls the ball backwards. Rolled in field towards... Pervader, two goal scorers combining. Colback uh, wins the ball and wins the throw. And Williams takes it quickly and gives it to Steve Cook. Cook across to the left for McKenna. And McKenna gives it back again for Steve Cook. Marvin Ekpeteta after 16 minutes. Ian Pervader after 64. And CJ Hamilton after 71. And Forrest are heading out of the FA Cup. Sent forward towards Surridge, gets up, heads on towards Johnson. I uh, well, beg his pardon, towards Scarpa, that was, down the uh, right-hand side. Blackpool clear, but it goes out into touch. Colback leaves it for Nico Williams to take the throw. 15 yards or so inside the Blackpool half. Throws in short to Johnson, gives it back to Williams, back to Johnson again, and he rolls it now to Scarper. Scarper in the middle of the Blackpool half. He's going to shoot from a long way out, and that deflects and loops high in the air, and is brought down comfortably by Chris Maxwell's catch. Well, if they are going to produce a rousing finale, Forrest, you sense they need the first of their three fairly quickly. <laughs> I would say so. There's been no real, nothing to suggest that they, that they will, other than... They might. They might here because Scarpa's finding Surridge. Looked, oh, fans certainly appealing for handball against uh, Andy Lyons as he took it away from Surridge on the edge of the box, but nothing doing. Think about the chances that Surridge has had today. Oh, they've been so complimentary since he joined the club a year ago, just about. Oh, the quality of his finishing, it's just not been his day today at all. That gets Williams. Sends this out of play off CJ Hamilton. I think there's a clash of heads and Williams has come off worst. Hamilton just pointing to his head to uh, tell the referee that that's what happened. And uh, there is going to be some treatment here for Nico Williams. Of course, uh, we saw in the World Cup that he sustained that head injury. 
and we'll take uh, no chances at all here. Forrest only used the two substitutes so far, Yates and Johnson on the field. 3-0 to score, 8,750 the crowd, 3,500 of those Forest fans. And many of those have decided to leave at the third goal. Hard to tell exactly how many as we're sitting right yeah. in the middle of them, but plenty got up and walked out two, yeah. as soon as the goal had gone in. Meanwhile, the treatment continues to... Uh, Nico Williams uh, tell you what's happening elsewhere uh, this afternoon it's still Mansfield 2 Barrow 2 on 95.5 FM and via the BBC Sport website it is still Aldershot 0 Notts County 2 you can hear commentary on the BBC Sport website elsewhere in the cup Accrington still lead National League side Boreham Wood 1-0 from their early goal it's Bournemouth 2 Burnley 4 uh, Chesterfield still lead West Brom 3-2 all the goals in the first half uh, Fleetwood 2, QPR 1, uh, so the uh, filed coast would appear to be the place for FA Cup shocks today. Hull Mill, Fulham 1, Ipswich 2, Rotherham 1, Middlesbrough 1, Brighton 3, Millwall 0, Sheffield United 2 and Shrewsbury 0, Sunderland 0. And uh, Morgan Rogers, the youngster on loan from Manchester City comes on to replace CJ Hamilton for Blackpool while the treatment continues to go on for Nico Williams I'm not sure they're going to allow him to continue no. um, he had a he had a nasty knock in the World Cup, in the World Cup he did. and he Which, played on for a bit in that one didn't yeah, he and that Wales got some criticism for that yeah um, there's uh, I don't think there's any question of him being able to continue here. He's up on his feet yeah. and he is uh, walking off down the tunnel. He's being led off down the tunnel. And uh, the change is going to see Loic on base. So come on. So on base. So comes on to replace Nico Williams. And that's it as far as uh, substitutions are concerned for Forrest. That's their third. Uh, you're allowed five, but they've made three single substitutions. You're only allowed the three uh, stoppages. And uh, and they so to play at right back. Uh, no Serge Aurier on the bench today for Forrest. One of the uh, first teamers, if you like, who are rested. Surridge keeps the ball in place. Scarpa knocks it through on halfway towards Colback. Blackpool have too many men back. And tell you that Barrow have now gone three two ahead over Mansfield. Stags were two 0 up at uh, just before half time. Barrow pulled one back just before the break. They got one back early in the second half, and now an Ollie Hawkins own goal means it's Mansfield two, Barrow three. You can hear the end of that on 95.5 FM from BBC Radio Nottingham. Aldershot nil, Notts County two is on the. BBC Sport website, courtesy of Dave Bracegirdle and Mark Stallard. Here's Ryan Yates in the middle of his own half, looking to get Johnson away in behind Husband. Johnson using his pace to get on the end of the ball, and Husband sticks at his task and wins the challenge, and then is dragged down by Johnson, and it'll be a free kick. And a yellow card for Brennan Johnson. I have to say, the exact point of impact was uh, right behind that pillar and stanchion that's uh, to our left hand side yeah. so I couldn't quite pulled see him exactly back. what he did no but he pulled him back seemed uh, unless there was excellent yeah there was a petulant pull worth, back because worth he, a yellow card um, well hmm. no debatable let's put debatable. it that way uh, Middlesbrough one Brighton four latest in the cup and an equaliser for Boreham Wood against Accrington one apiece. Here come Blackpool looking for a fourth goal against Forrest. It's uh, out wide on the left-hand side. Preveda sends it through for Morgan Rogers to send it in towards the feet of Yates. Six yards out and down low bravely goes Wayne Hennessy and makes the catch. Hennessy bowls it out short to Scarpa. In a very deep position at the moment. And he just lobs it across his own half and loses out. 
loses the ball. Here's Morgan Rogers, and he's taking on Toffolo. Fizzes in across towards the near post. And again, Hennessy catches, this time at head height. And it remains 3-0 to Blackpool. Blackpool 3, Forest 0. In the FA Cup third round. And uh, Forest are not going to see the fourth round. Here's Steve Cook charging forward across halfway, lays it off for Johnson. Johnson forward to Scarpa, who's uh, 30 yards out and wide right. Gives it back in field to Johnson. Johnson trying to shake off three around him. And it's cleared by Blackpool against Scarpa. Hoisted high across the middle of their own half. Yates wins it. And uh, Lyons responds quicker than Dennis to get the ball away for Blackpool. Toffolo races to go and pick the ball up and then looks up and there's nobody really on for him. Yates now comes and finds him and Toffolo now gives it Surridge. Surridge turning. 30 yards out, rolls it to his right. Here's Loicombe so well forward at the corner of the penalty area. He tucks it back for Scarpa. Scarpa square for Colback. Colback square for Yates. Blackpool keeping Forrest at arm's length here. But Toffolo left side, drops it back in field for Dennis. Dennis into the penalty area. Onto his right foot, tucks it back outside the box for Yates. Gives it back left-hand side for Toffolo. Into Dennis again. Dennis forced outside the box. Near the left corner of it. Trying to turn to face up. Lyons, Lyons takes it off him and then hammers it away. But it's at the expense of a forest throw, which will be near the Blackpool corner flag, left-hand side. Forest probing, but 3-0 down. Here's Dennis, again, left side, trying to take on his man. It breaks for Toffolo. Toffolo's cross is blocked and it goes behind for a forest corner. Reluctance to put the ball in there and into the box, isn't it? Three players, four players in the box. Uh, it took so long, I mean, Blackpool had got 11 players back. Um, the attack took so long, stopping, checking. Here's the corner, in towards the near post. Toffolo got a flick to it, then it hit the defender and loops kindly up in the air for Maxwell, who claims it and takes his time before getting up. And, well, he might. Seven minutes to go. More and more Forest fans are heading for the exit. Beat the traffic out the car parks. Head back after what has been a very disappointing away day. Away days have not been great this season for Forest. They improved on uh, Wednesday night in the Premier League. And 11 changes here have not worked for Forrest. And here's Paveda leaping away from Cook's challenge and feeding it into Jerry Yates. Yates onto his left foot, drives it wide of the target. Great chance to make it four, but he couldn't curl it in. Instead, it went straight and well wide, and it remains 3-0 Blackpool. Well, should have been four. He's, a, he's had a quite a decent run, I think, of, of goals, Yates, and uh, Forrest has torn open. I know they're pushing forward to try and get a goal. The game's gone for them, <coughs> excuse me, but, wow, the, the ease at which teams just get at them and, and, and create a, a great chance like that. It's not even a half chance, that's a great chance. And uh, that is all too easy. It's been very disappointing. Toffolo, just inside his own half as we come in towards the final five minutes at Bloomfield Road. And Forrest trailing by three goals to nil. Mansfield 3-2 down at home to Barrow. And uh, Notts County leading at Aldershot by two goals to nil in the National League. Long ball forward, Surridge goes chasing it. Keeps it in play but then it's headed calmly by uh, Husband. Back to his goalkeeper. I beg his pardon, I think it's Thornley, who uh, just did the tidying up for Blackpool. Nick Pateta, centre-half, who opened the scoring after 16 minutes. Here's McKenna trying to head the ball backwards to Hennessy, but well wide of Hennessy, wide of goal, corner for Blackpool. And uh, as I keep saying, more Forest fans deciding that they have seen enough this afternoon. Plenty are staying. I don't, think disappointed, many, they? I don't think many expected this in the second no, half. I think 1-0 no. down at half-time. I think uh, it was uh, 
an expectation that Forrest would come back at Blackpool, which, to be fair, they did in the opening few minutes of the second half. Here's the cross into the penalty area, and that's swept home for a fourth goal. On the half volley, hits the underside of the crossbar from Jerry Yates and bounces in. And it's Blackpool 4, Forest nil. And that really is enough for hundreds of Forest fans to head for the exits. Ball into the penalty area from the right-hand side. Yates met it first, half volley, hit the bar, bounced down, went in. Blackpool have a fourth with three and a half minutes to go until the end of the game. Blackpool of the Championship, four. Forest of the Premier League, nil. Well, they've given Forest a lesson in finishing because Forest have had it. Three chances exactly the same as that. Cut back into the near post. And uh, that's how to stick the ball in the net. It's been a lesson there for Forest. You look on paper, this team will be a decent championship team, you think. All the players, with the exception of Scapper, who's played at a different level. You've only got Fuster who started the game that haven't played in the Premier League. And it uh, doesn't matter if you put a team together, you expect a little bit more uh, about them. They've had the chances, certainly, but defensively, I'm afraid it's been, uh, it's been poor. Here's Morgan Rogers on halfway. Louis Combe so battling with him to try and win it back. Can't do so. Uh, does at the second attempt, and Blackpool get the throw on the halfway line. A couple of minutes remaining of normal time. Forrest humiliated here by a team who have not won in nine, are in the championship relegation zone. I know it is much changed, Forrest. We should add that as Umbeso fouls his man and it's a, a free kick. It is not the team that has been performing better in recent weeks in the Premier League. Lots of changes, but it should be performing better than it has this afternoon. Here's Colback finding Louis Kumbé so near his own corner flag, having to withstand a challenge, does so, then stumbles over, and Blackpool are in here for a fifth, sent towards the near post by Paveda and blocked by Hennessy at the near post and turned away for a corner. I mean, it's it's turning into shambolic at the back. Uh, the, the, defensively, I, I, you can't catch me breath at, at, at just how average it's been. Yeah. The uh, average, average is kind, I think. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> we have to come back on Wednesday night and and, and and go again like this team does. But it's uh, here's the corner swung in towards the back post and it beats everybody and goes behind for a goal kick. Uh, this team has to pick itself. Well, the club has to pick itself up. Whether it's this team or well, it's a totally different team. One would one would imagine it will be a a stronger team. I'm still. Steve Cooper will be absolutely furious because there's no way this team should be losing four goals. Um, no. There's enough in there from the start for this team to have gone and won this game, and I'm sure he, he, he thought he'd, there was enough there. Um, goal down at half time, uh, but they've had the chances. I had just counting that they've probably had six chances for us in the game. Uh, Blackpool have had seven and scored four of them. Um, so that's that's the biggest difference. That's the biggest difference we notice in the Premier League. Teams have one, two chances, they take them. Forest at the moment aren't able to do that. Uh, there's another change for Blackpool. This is the... Uh, well, I make this their fourth change. I'm not sure they can do that, can they? That's uh, Don Thompson coming on. That's their fourth stoppage to make a change uh, and his replaced husband perhaps the game will be void because they've made too many substitutions uh, here's Yates charging forward towards the penalty area oh he's bundled into and he goes down and it looks like it ought to be a penalty and the referee says no charged into the back of was uh, Ryan Yates but, uh, not having anything of it, the uh, referee, James Linnington. Ah. And it remains 4-0 to Blackpool. And the 90 minutes are up. 
have to say I didn't see how much stoppage time was added because at three minutes it was three was it so the uh, the change that was taking place at the same time here's Toffolo the ball is headed forward by Surridge towards Scarpa and whipped away by Ek Pateta and McKenna sends it back to his goalkeeper Wayne Hennessy beaten four times sends this long towards Emmanuel Dennis might get away from his man in a left wing position here Dennis trying to take on Lyons as he drifts towards the edge of the penalty area he gives it now to Toffolo and the headed goal is from Ryan Yates diving header from Yates steers it into the far corner beyond the goalkeeper and Forrest have a goal in stoppage time Yates gets one it's not going to make any difference. There's only a minute left of added time and Forest trail Blackpool by four goals to one. Yeah, but that's just how simple this game can be. The ball over the top. Dennis went, he gave an easy pass to Toffolo. Toffolo put it into a good area. You get a player like Yates that wants to get into the box and a simple header into the far court. That's how simple this game is. And they've, they've, they've overcomplicated things up front. They've tried to have too many touches and slowed the game too much. Uh, and a uh, little bit of compensation for him nice for Ryan Yates to get on and get a goal doesn't mean anything uh, in this game but uh, the people that have stayed on they've, they've seen a goal at least but that's how easy it is Colin that just put the ball in the box into an area and, and people get in on it we try and dribble and dribble and, and have another touch have another touch Scarpa gives the ball away and a shot from a long way out from Kenny Dougal goes wide. And that will just about be it. I fancy by the time Wayne Hennessy has taken this next goal kick. Referee has a look at his watch. And that is it. Forrest humbled and humiliated by the seaside, by a side in the championship relegation zone. They're out of the FA Cup, a competition which brought them so much joy and pride last season. Sees them exit at the first hurdle this season and well and truly beaten by a Blackpool side who win a game for the first time in 10 matches. Marvin Ekpateta after 16 minutes, Ian Pervader after 64, CJ Hamilton 71, Jerry Yates 86 and uh, Ryan Yates getting a goal back for Forrest in stoppage time means they've been beaten by four goals to one players come across towards this near side and those fans that are still here uh, applaud their efforts Steve Cooper uh, leading the applause to the supporters as well he is not going to be a happy head coach tonight because so much of that after 11 changes fell below expectation Forrest well below par we should say that they had the chances. They created the chances. Sam Sorridge on another day gets a hat-trick. Today, he doesn't get one. He's put two over the bar from six yards out, one into the side netting when clean through, albeit from an angle. And on another day, he puts at least two, if not three, of those in the net. They've had numerous other efforts on goal that have gone wide or have been saved by the goalkeeper. But Blackpool were clinical. When they had a chance, it ended up in the forest net. And it is they who go through to the fourth round of the FA Cup, beating Forest by four goals to one. Steve Sutton. Yep, yeah, very disappointed. <laughs> very, very disappointing. Um, I'm sure when you put the team sheet in, Steve Cooper thought this game, he got every chance of, of getting through with, with what he had. Every player played in the Premier League at some stage in their careers. Um, one of the pluses, I guess, is that uh, Scarpa's got through 90 minutes under his belt. He looks like a player that can create chances, possibly if he gets into uh, the Premier League team, then, you know, he may have that chance to, to shine, to give you something a little bit different. <coughs> a little bit different, but now well beaten today. As you say, Blackpool were, were clinical in their, in their finishing Forest I, I just marked down, I think, seven or eight good chances. Uh, Surridge had three. Manuel Dennis had a couple. Um, Nico Williams, Nico Williams had a couple. Save. They, they created themselves a couple of saves. They've got the goal. Um, 
Blackpool have, have only had two more shots on target, uh, so they've had six on target. Um, but we've seen that before. Uh, it's just disappointing that you know that they couldn't get it together quickly enough and for long enough periods. They had a good spell or two good spells in the first half where they passed the ball quickly and Blackpool couldn't live with them. And that was the secret. You've got to pass the ball one touch, two touch, which is what you would expect from Premier League players, not, not to have half a dozen touches. And as soon as you get up to the edge of the box and you have four, five, six, seven touches, everybody's back. All the spaces are, are then closed down. That's where you need your one touch, two touch. And that's why I'm looking at, at, at Scarford because he was the one that played it in and moved but the players around him couldn't pick him back out or weren't looking to pick him back out. His pass and movement in and around the edge of the box looked looked like good movement. Um, and if he can be found by, find good players around him to give him the ball back, then that might be a different different case for him. But yeah, just uh, yeah, very disappointing at the back. I think they've given Blackpool three goals um, from defensive errors and uh, yeah, just, just not good enough on the day. So not good enough at either end. Is, no, is not kind of what we're saying. Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, this this harks back to three years ago, possibly when it was exactly the same. You, they couldn't couldn't buy a goal at one end, and they couldn't keep a clean sheet at the other. And the bit in the middle was was all right, but yeah, it just we thought we got past that a little bit. Um, if this had been Premier League opposition today, you'd say, well, okay, away from home. Um, then you, you, you sort of take it on the chin a little bit, but that's very, very difficult to take today, I've got to say. Very, very difficult to take. How much, I wonder, will Steve... I mean, I'll ask him in a bit, but I, I wonder how much a performance like that tells him about the players that are not, at the moment, in his Premier League first team. I mean, you know, you looked at some of the games where they've played before earlier in this season, in, in the League Cup, for instance. He makes yeah. seven, eight, nine changes, and a number of those players impress enough to then be in the Premier League team the following week. This is in stark contrast to that. All yeah. of these players trying to get into that Premier League side and none of them have really done themselves any favours. No, I don't think anybody's done themselves any favours in there at all. Um, it's, been a, it's been an arduous day for them. <laughs> I think, if he's honest, he'll look, at, he'll look at the team and he'll go, well, that's why I don't pick him. That's why I don't pick him. That's why I don't pick him. Now that's why he's on the bench every week because maybe you know yeah he didn't do all right, um, but that's why these players can't play every week and it's it, it's it's a harsh reality that um, you have players that last year were outstanding. This year the the next step at the next level it is too much for them and when they actually asked to come and play back at the level they were last year because they're not match fit and because they're not playing week in, week out, it tells on you, it is hard for a team to come together for one game. Um, and it, it's been proved time and time again and will be proved in the future from every club that tries to do it. But there's still enough out there to go and win this game. And uh, so I think, yeah, I'll be very, very disappointed. Yep, that was uh, a horrible trip to the seaside as far as Forest are concerned on a cold and a wet and a damp day in January uh, here on uh, the uh, seaside in the shadow of the Blackpool Tower as the uh, oh, the vocal stewards begin to uh, uh, just tidy up the uh, what is now an empty stand here where the Forest fans started leaving from pretty much the second Blackpool goal which uh, came after uh, 26 minutes, that, uh, I beg your pardon, 26 minutes of the uh, second half. Um, Steve Forrest have got to pick themselves up quickly ahead of a League Cup quarter-final on Wednesday night. Well, I'm sure, I'm sure Steve Cooper would have would have had that game in in mind, because that's a, that are two or three steps nearer to a final. So maybe some of these players were rested with that in mind, and then I think it's Leicester on Saturday. Leicester in the league, yeah. So Wednesday, Saturday, you can get away with, you know. The, and so he, he's 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 sort of sacrificed this game a little bit. Let's see what happens. But I think it will be a far stronger side out 
against against well it'll have to be against <laughs> Wolves. Can't, on, see, on can't see too many getting no. another chance, can no, you? No, no. no I can't. Um, Marvin Ekpateta after 16 minutes, Ian Poveda after 64, CJ Hamilton after 71, and Jerry Yates after 86 minutes. Forest own Yates, Ryan in stoppage time, getting one back, but it doesn't change the fact that Forest have gone crashing out of the FA Cup to a side in the championship relegation zone. It's finished at Bloomfield Road in front of 8,750. Blackpool 4, Forest 1.